Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to educating and empowering men to address erectile dysfunction, improve confidence, and enhance the satisfaction in their relationships. This podcast is brought to you by ErectionIQ.com. Learn more at ErectionIQ.com. Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. I am Mark Goldberg, Certified Sex Therapist. I am deeply passionate about working with men like you to help resolve their ED. Hello, my name is Casey. I am the podcast producer at Erectile Dysfunction Radio. I'm very happy to join Mark once again for today's episode on psychogenic. It's a word, not sure if you would clarify it as a buzzword, but it's a word that comes up a lot when we talk about erectile dysfunction and how to go about defeating it. So first of all, Mark, Let's review some of the different underlying causes of erectile dysfunction. Before we jump into defining the word psychogenic and getting into more of how that impacts erectile dysfunction. So erectile dysfunction is a medical condition and there are a myriad of medical conditions that can contribute to erectile dysfunction. So there are metabolic issues, which are you know, the hormones flowing through the body. There are circulatory issues, which is the blood that flows to the penis. There are nerves or the nervous system, which you know play a role in in erections as well. There is you know muscles in the pelvic floor. There's lots of different medical components that can cause or contribute to erectile dysfunction. In addition to this handful of medical conditions that are often involved in erectile dysfunction, the brain plays a major role in facilitating erections. Most men, once they cross a certain basic age, generally speaking, it's somewhere in their early 20s, um, will notice that they experience far less spontaneous erections without any stimulation. And they will see that it requires some sort of stimulus to get the process going. All of that is happening in the brain. So how receptive your brain is to that stimulation, um, what else is going on in both your individual brain, inside of your relationship, all of these factors contribute to whether there will be adequate stimulation to get the erection process started. So generally speaking, as a clinician who focuses on the psychological side, I tend to break these down into two broad categories. There's the the physical or the medical side and the psychological or mental side. And there are a myriad of causes really on each that can contribute to or be the primary cause of erectile dysfunction. Mark, can you define psychogenic and is it true that psychogenic erectile dysfunction is indeed an underlying and legitimate cause of erectile dysfunction? Psychogenic is a word which means caused by or or originating somewhere in the brain. So when we apply that to a medical condition like erectile dysfunction, what it means is that the physical manifestation that is happening is caused by or or is originated in the brain. Mark, is that a legitimate underlying cause of erectile dysfunction then? Yes, 100%. It is a legitimate cause of erectile dysfunction. So let me let me take a brief detour here for a moment. So for many years, um, before there were some robust uh, medical treatments like the medications that are that are very common today, it was believed that erectile dysfunction, along with a number of other sexual dysfunctions, were caused by the brain in about ninety percent of cases. So it's only in recent times that the medical model has become primary. But that being said, there has been effective psychological treatment for people who who put the investment in to be able to address uh, erectile dysfunction in various manifestations for many years that's been available and it's effective. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just a podcast producer here, a lay person, if you will. So I'm curious, why do we need such a fancy word for psychogenic? 
can we just say it's mental ED or something? Why do I always see this word psychogenic reoccurring? Does it indicate something more precise or accurate or what's the deal with that? So this is a great question. And I think if you are reading different things, you're going to see different definitions in terms of what exactly psychogenic means. I'll share with our listeners why I prefer the term psychogenic. And that has to do with another term, which is psychosomatic. So I differentiate between psychogenic and psychosomatic. People are very familiar, I think, with the term psychosomatic, which means that I am having some type of psychological experience, which is causing a physical manifestation somewhere in my body. Uh, So, it could be lower back pain, can sometimes be considered psychosomatic, Uh, other ailments in the body, stomach pain, um, where a, a psychological distress is being expressed physically in the body somewhere else. Psychogenic erectile dysfunction, I think, is a little bit different because your lower back, as an example, doesn't need your brain for it to function regularly. It does what it does. In other words, whatever functions require the brain happen on a subconscious level doesn't require any specific environment. Erections, on the other hand, do require stimulation. The brain is a necessary component in the erection in general. So when something isn't set up correctly or working correctly, or the, st- the stimulation is not adequate, this is not a expression of a psychological distress. This is a key component of the erection, which is just not present. And that needs to be addressed differently than, say, just addressing a a certain level of anxiety or stress that a person is having that's causing physical pain or a physical sensation somewhere in the body. So, I try to be precise in that terminology, um, that psychogenic is referring to a key component that's always required or very often required to have a satisfactory erection that isn't here. Now, I, I will say that there is a concept that there can be a psychosomatic expression in erectile dysfunction as well. I don't want to say that's not a possibility, but more often than not, and I think in the overwhelming majority of situations, it is the key component that is missing, that needs to be there in order for a man to achieve an erection. I'll just add that this difference between psychosomatic and psychogenic, I think if that's better understood, more men would be prone to seek treatment for psychogenic erectile dysfunction. It's very difficult to hear, well, you must be stressed, and that's why this is happening in your body. So, a lot of people are not comfortable with that concept, that there's something happening in their brain that is beyond their control and is having some not well understood manifestation somewhere else in their body. But I think when we can break it down as, well, this is a component that you always have when things are working and something's changed, something's missing. There's distress in your relationship. Something that you have enjoyed is just no longer accessible to you and and you're not able to get the kind of stimulation that you need. I think when it's framed this way, men have an easier time taking that next step towards treatment. How common is psychogenic erectile dysfunction, generally speaking? Is it a 50-50 split, you think, between medical-caused erectile dysfunction and psychogenic erectile dysfunction? What would be a rough estimate that you would give just based on what you've seen in your professional life? So, I want to be very careful here how I answer this question because what I see would very much be a skewed picture. I tend to see more psychogenic erectile dysfunction because more often than not, I am a second or third stop. In other words, people tend to go to their doctors first, urologist, their primary care physician, and they have had the medical side ruled out. And for men who have a more pronounced medical condition going on, it's less likely that I would be early on in their stop. All that being said, the statistics show that 
it's it's estimated that it's about between 10 and 20 percent of known erectile dysfunction cases are um, psychologically based there that leaves about 80 to 90 percent of cases as being physically based but something that I've mentioned on other episodes is even physical or physiological erectile dysfunction oftentimes has psychological components to it as well in other words it's very unlikely that a man experiences erectile dysfunction, goes to his doctor, and that has had no impact on his brain, that hasn't created any hesitation about engaging with a partner, that hasn't raised his anxiety at all. I mean, I think the mere fact that a man shows up at the doctor's office indicates that these experiences are impacting his brain. Very often, what I end up seeing is men who have resolved the medical side of erectile dysfunction, whether that's with a medication or they have addressed an underlying medical issue and that's been cleared, but the erectile dysfunction persists. And a lot of that has to do with a secondary anxiety that can develop following a medical condition or a medical procedure or medical intervention. So I think it's a very tricky question. I think most men, if not all men, will be psychologically impacted by the experience of erectile dysfunction. Many men will have that as a contributing factor, and there will be you know, a fair amount of men, they tend to be younger, who are primarily, if not solely, uh, experiencing psychogenic or psychologically based erectile dysfunction. Walk us through the treatment options for someone dealing with psychogenic erectile dysfunction. Say they do want to go ahead and move forward with therapy with a professional such as yourself. Is this something that can be resolved in one session and you're good to go? Is this something that has to be a recurring session? I know some people may be hesitant to sign up for therapy because they don't want to be committed to it for the next year of their life on an ongoing basis. Can you just walk us through how that works? So this is a great question. And I think this is probably one of the biggest barriers uh, to treatment, both with regard to psychogenic erectile dysfunction, and I think with mental health therapy in general. Um, Unlike other uh, medical conditions where there are very well-defined treatment protocols um, in terms of addressing physical conditions in the body, uh, the brain is extremely complex. No two people have been uh, through the same experiences. They don't internalize things in the same type of way. So it's a very tricky question uh, to answer. Because of this, I strive to work with men in a four-session protocol. And I'm very upfront about that, that there's, it's unlikely that, that we will address everything that's contributing to the erectile dysfunction, but I recognize that um, a lot can be done within those four sessions, and, and generally the goal of those four sessions is to be able to get some movement in a direction toward whatever the goal is. So if it's to be able to achieve an erection in a partnered setting, that we at least can have some du- some direction or some gains in that direction over a four session period. But all that being said, there's certainly no guarantee. And um, for some men, it's just a longer term process. And for other men, it goes you know far quicker than that. Mark, do you have anything else you'd like to add to today's discussion about psychogenic erectile dysfunction before we wrap up here? So I would just re-emphasize that psychogenic erectile dysfunction is not psychosomatic erectile dysfunction, meaning these components are necessary for almost any man, certainly any adult male, to achieve an erection. There has to be stimulation. Uh, Your brain has to be engaged. You have to feel some sort of comfort with the partner that you're with. And when those things are absent, you should not expect to get an erection. That's not your mind actively intervening. That's not your mind blocking. Yes, there are instances where that can happen. But for the vast majority of men, there are components that are necessary to the erection process that are missing. It's not hocus pocus. It's something that when things are working, it's present. And when things are not working, it's generally not present. 
So I want men to understand that as as clear as I can make that, that this is not your mind hijacking you or taking things over. Yes, that can happen. Yes, anxiety can do that. But really, that anxiety is just getting in the way of your mind being present. And that's really what the goal of the process is, is to get things back on track the way that they were. Thanks for listening to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. For more information on today's topic and understanding how the mind impacts erectile dysfunction, please visit ErectionIQ.com. That's ErectionIQ.com.